Welcome back. Hey, Johnny, we, we've talked a little bit, of, of course, about uh, Piping Lane in 1972, you win, and that's your yep. first time you've met Piping Lane. You touched on that. And I was thinking as you're telling the story, the number of players that are young in their first year that win an AFL grand final or, or win an AFLW final or with it, whatever team they're with, they win it and they go, gee, this is easy. This is yeah. a lot easier than I thought. Yeah. But then you yeah. had to wait eight years to get that's your right. next one. Mm -hmm. Did you have that thought, though, when you won it? You thought, well, it's a bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, Phil, my, my ambition <clears throat> was never like a Melbourne Cup. And, and you can line 100 jockeys up out there and yep. say, what is your ambition? And, and this is as a jockey starting out. And you'll say, I want to win a Melbourne Cup. Now, my ambition was to win an Adelaide Cup. Right. Because hometown, I mm. think, which is very important, mm. As, you, mm. as, as you guys know, with your footy teams. Yep. To win in your area is more important than yeah. any other area. You can, you can go to another oval and win, but if you win at home... Mm. It's got a little bit of it something does. about it, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yep. I agree. And I that's agree. what I wanted to win an Adelaide Cup. Yep. Well, I was lucky that I won a few. Mm. but Just the three. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Yep. But <laughs> when I, when I uh, actually won it, and that's when it started to click. Because, see, I won the Adelaide Cup on Rain Lover, and when I came in, Graham Hegney, who was a great trainer, and Graham said, and he'd won the Melbourne Cup, we'd get him, get him. And he said, uh, you're riding him in the Melbourne Cup. He said, and he'll win. And I thought, well, Graham d doesn't make statements. Mm. And, and I thought, wow, what's the Melbourne Cup? Well, mm. in the meantime, Graham took ill. Right. And we lost the horse to Mickey Ravens. Well, Jimmy Johnson, who was my mentor, yep. mm. Jimmy rode Rain Lover and he won the Melbourne Cup. Right. Um, a lot of people said to me, you must have been very dis... I, look, I said, I was disappointed. I said, but the guy that won on him was my mentor. Mm. Right. I said, and Jimmy only died a few weeks ago. Yep. And he was 93, Jimmy. But all through my life, we were mates. Mm. And, you know, he yeah. won on him by eight lengths. And, you know, I watched the race and people said, oh, you wish you... I said, I'd love to have been on him. But, I, but if anyone else had a won on him except Jimmy, I would have found it harder. Yes. Yeah. But I really thought, mm. great. And then a year later, and, and we can talk about great races. We talk our Waverly Star, we talk about Bone Crusher and the Cox Plate. And they say that's the greatest race of the century. But the thing to me was, Rain Lover, nine stone eight, also seven stone eight, mm. three furlongs down the straight, over two miles after two miles, three furlongs, that must be between them. Yeah. And two stone. Yeah, yeah exactly. And JJ lifted him to the line. Yeah. yeah. That was the greatest race. I ever, mm. And, you know, people have got memories because, you know, when the media built up that race like with, with the two in the Cox Plate, mm. uh, but then the Melbourne Cup was called and then forgotten. But they always say, this was the greatest race of Sydney. My greatest race I've ever seen in my life was Rain Lover also because the weight difference, the other two horses had the same weight, yeah. but they, there was two stone yeah. between them and Rain Lover's heart was that big yeah. and he yeah. never, never gave up. And nor did JJ. He was all the way. That, 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 and, you know, I've been lucky in my time because I, I have seen bondings with... And you've, you, you've seen bondings with different with different people, with clubs, some clubs, you know, like they never ever leave, like Russell Ebert and that, and they never ever leave that club and, and they're great, you know, for their mm. club. Mm. Well, you see the bonding, and I, I've been lucky over the years because I did see Luke Nolan with Black Caviar. Mm. You put him on, it was 100%. Mm. You see Winks, Huey mm. Bowman, you put Huey on Winks, it's 100%. Mm. Yep. You look at Maccabi Diva, our own Maccabi Diva, you put mm. Glenn Boss on, there's your 100%. Mm. We don't see it a lot. Yeah. But we do see it. It's and unique, isn't I it? seen I was lucky in my era that I seen that. Mm. I seen that. And I, and, and I, I just used to look at them in the yard and think, you know, I mean, I, I rode a lot of horses in my time, but uh, the, the bonding that was with them mm. was, w w I, I felt bonded with the horse, but it was recognised, I recognised it as, mm. this is just unbelievable. You know, look, throw Luke on, that caviar loves him. She yeah. knows him. Yeah. Maccabi Diva, bossy. You know, that was, I mean, no, you know yeah. she loved him and she would, you know, the greatest day I've ever spent on a racetrack was when she won her third Melbourne Cup. And you know, she stood in front of the grandstand, you guys will remember, and she stood in front of the grandstand, she had her ears like that, yes. and Greg Miles said, she owns the grandstand. And she stood there like that. Yes, she did. Uh, and I, I was, I, I tried to come back with her, but... Banjo was sort of, you know, one of his days where he's not real fast. <laughs> and Mackay Medivh was a bit faster. And she got there, and I, I was about 100 metres behind, and I just stood there and I looked at her and I thought, 
you know, this in your industry, it's same as football, it's same as anything, it's, it's the same as any sport. Mm. There is some days that you never forget. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a day in my memory that will stay with me forever. And that photo, John. Yeah, photo. yeah that photo of her there, yeah. Barry, she was just, as if to say, and I, I thought, I could just about read her mind, and, and she said, I'm pretty good, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you are the best. Well, if you could bring your, if you could bring your front legs up, it, it just would have gone, oh, it's me. Look, yeah, it's me. It would have been. It was just an unbelievable day. But the yeah. crowd were there too, weren't they? Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. that was the atmosphere. And, you know, and, and I've, I've found over the years with racing, and you'll find in football, and we've got some great footballers that will actually give themselves to the public. Yes. They do. They give themselves to the public. She was one of the horses, uh, Maccabi Diva. Uh, Tony Sandick give her to the public. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'll never forget the, the, the day she went in the third one. I was, I was just coming out of the Channel 7 studio and we were just going down to get ready for the first race. And Tony Sandick was the first guy I ran into. And I said to Tony, I said, I think you win your third Melbourne Cup today, Tony. Mm. He said, uh, do you think so? I said, yeah. I said, what an achievement. He said, I don't own her anymore. I said, you haven't sold her. He said, no. He said, see them out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They own her. Yeah. He said, yeah. I've lost ownership. Yeah. yeah. He said, they own her. Yeah. And he was that happy for that. And then same with Black Caviar. Uh, and of course, you guys know Hollywood Sid, the bookmaker, his father, Paper Mac. He came down to Morfittville at the swimming pool the day before the, the big race. And Black Caviar was here. And he was in a wheelchair. Mm. And Peter Moody brought her over to the wheelchair. <laughs> and he patted her. Wow. And you know, he said that was his one of his Big greatest memory. memories of racing ever. And it was just unbelievable. It, 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 it's an emotional sport. I mean, we do forget some of them, but a lot of them we don't. Yeah. And there's some wonderful memories. I mean, we always remember the Melbourne Cups and the big ones in Adelaide yeah. because they're the big events. It's they're like the, the grand ones. final. Yep. 2,300 wins, mate. Is there, is there a couple that you remember that other people wouldn't have? You know, you've come from a long way back or... You know, it's a horse that's not supposed to win and you've won. Have there ever been a couple of those where you've gone, they were special to me, but no one else would have noticed? They, they were special to me because um, a, a horse called Amaranth that I won the Adelaide Cup on, I, 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 can, I can still vividly remember, at the 600 metre mark, I had a wall in front of me. Gone. 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 Gone to the world it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. And I had, I thought, no chance. And Robbie, Robbie G, you know, yeah. the, used to play yep. his singer, he yeah. owned him. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I thought, no hope, but I'm still going to persevere. Yeah. I persevered and persevered and persevered and, and won by that much. Yeah. And now, if you'd have said to me, at the 600 metre mark, yeah, that's right. where are you going to run? Yeah. I would have said 10th, yeah. Yeah. with a bit of luck. Yeah. So at what stage do you think, hey, well, I'm in this. I'm persisting. Hey, I reckon I'm in. I reckon I'm a chance to win it. Yeah, only the last two hops that he put his head out. As so he win it. And you know, it was so much satisfaction because... Uh, not, not that it's big owners or that, but it, it just bought Robbie G, who was famous, yeah. you know, like for his singing and playing, yeah. and, 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 and it just brought him into racing as, you know, this is a good game. Yeah. And these were the sort of people that we really loved. I mean, I rode for Robert Sanker and some of the richest owners in the world. Uh, but, and and I can, I can, you can appreciate now the shakes. They have so many oh, horses yes. in the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Sheikh will be in Dubai watching the race on television. Mm. And then the race will be over. And so he'll switch the channel and watch a horse that he's got racing in America. Mm -hmm. But you give it to an Australian group of people, they will have drunk the state money from the <laughs> Melbourne Cup before they leave Flemington that night, I can tell you. Oh, hey, Johnny, really enjoy you making time for us, mate. Johnny Lewis right. is our very special guest. Stay with us. Still plenty to come on the show.